Hello, everyone on the interwebs. It's showing we're live on Facebook for our Steve. You told me that the Ramonas did 20 sets. Yeah. 20 the minute who? sets. The, the Ramones. Ramones. Yeah. The Ramones did like, you know, 20, sometimes 20 minute sets, maybe 30. Okay. So this is probably going to be a 20 minute set uh, because I have to be over on in the rooms at 8.30 to do a guest gig there. I'm just giving people a minute to find us. If you're here for the pub day launch uh, live cast on the Facebook with Dr. Jamie Marich and Steven Danziger, you are in the right place. I'm just bouncing this over and we will officially get started. So Steve, how's the weather out in California? Um, oh, look, it's sunny. Yeah, it's sunny. It's a little hazy. Air quality has gone down again from yeah. the fires in Napa, unfortunately. Oh, so hello, Kathy. Some people are saying they found us on Facebook. If you are here for the eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time pub day, so it is officially pub day for Trauma in the 12 Steps Daily Meditation Reader. Unfortunately, I am only holding the uh, proof right now because oh, although we love working with KDP and, and Amazon, uh, there's a printing delay right now. So we ourselves do not have physical hard copies and on Amazon, only the Kindle versions are up right now, but this is the official release date. This is what will show in the imprint. So I figured now is as good a time as any, Steve. Yes. For us to talk about our new projects, the Trauma and the 12 Steps Daily Meditation Reader and the Trauma and the 12 Steps Workbook, which I've already defaced with a sticker. <laughs> but I think it's a good message, right? I do not think defaced is the correct word for that. I think it belongs right there. So, Stephen, let's start with, because a lot of people who are joining this particular live cast, although we've been interviewed together many times, may not know the story of how we came together as an ice dance partnership. So, Steve is my ice dance partner. Yeah, uh, as we is now, yeah, as we now have written and birthed many things together. So, Steve, why don't you tell the story of how you stalked me? That's the impolite way to call it, but it is the word that we've used oftentimes, the two of us. Um, but anyway, what happened was, is Jamie wrote this amazing book, Trauma in the 12 Steps. And I happened to be working in uh, the trauma therapy field as an EMDR therapist, and also helping to run a treatment center. And I was looking for resources during the old internet search and found, oh my goodness, there's a book called Trauma in the 12 Steps. That's crazy. And then I read it and I was like, that's crazy good. And then I contacted Jamie. Some people call it stalking and some people call it, I called him. And um, it's networking. It's networking. It's called networking. And a friendship and, and colleague, colleagueship was born mm -hmm. and a writing partnership and ice dancing partnership. And so, yeah, I had Jamie come out here to LA to train my team. And then we've been doing stuff like this, just hanging out on the interwebs and yeah. And stuff. And yeah. I, I have slept on that couch behind Steve when That's I've right. been in LA. We have, you know, hung out at each other's places and all that good stuff. So Stephen is also a senior faculty member with the Institute for Creative Mindfulness. Steve is a gifted EMDR therapist. And when I launched the training program, he, he also kind of stalked me and said, hey, can I join your team? And I said, sure, why not? So yeah, our, our partnership has, has been an amazing one, friendship, partnership, uh, us doing EMDR trainings together. Steve essentially runs our West Coast operations for mindfulness informed EMDR training with ICM. And in 2018, uh, Springer Publishing put out our first official book together, which is EMDR therapy and mindfulness for trauma focused care. Although I'm really, really heart warmed by these projects we're going to be talking about tonight. Because the other thing Steve and I share, in addition to a love of EMDR and trauma therapy, is of course a personal connection to the 12 steps. So uh, I am someone who is, today's International Recovery Day, capping off the last day of international of recovery month, 2020. Got to keep reducing stigma, speaking it out loud, that recovery works. So I have been continuously sober for over 18 years through AA, but I stayed sober and got mostly well through uh, trauma work and EMDR therapy and yoga and meditation. And Steve, why don't you give us the nutshell of your recovery portfolio? <laughs> the nutshell is 
Uh, I have been uh, in recovery through AA for 31 years. And uh, one of the jokes we used to tell in New York, so in, I, was, uh, I lived in New York till 2002. And that's where I got sober and did all my things. Um, we used to joke, uh, they told me it was a bridge back to life, but it was actually a tunnel into other 12-step programs. So I've also accessed the 12 steps in other uh, arenas and other um, fellowships. And so I'm a deep believer and uh, I have benefited greatly uh, from being uh, involved with 12-step recovery. And so I love it. I love, I love meetings. I yeah. love the people. I love recovery. And I love how it integrates, especially once uh, people write books like Trauma the 12 Steps and then create these other, uh, co-create these other um, manuals to help people to find their way through the 12 steps in a trauma-informed, trauma-sensitive way. So. so let's let's talk about the current project. So many of you who follow my work know that North Atlantic Books published the revised and expanded edition of Trauma and the 12 Steps. It was originally published in 2012, which is where Steve found me. And then this revised and expanded edition essentially added eight new years of material. We added the new chapters on diversity inclusion and, and spiritual diversity. And, you know, we, Steve and I have been jawboning these ideas for several years. We do this thing called riffing where we just kind of hang out over breakfast or in his office or at an MDRIA conference at an airport and just, just kind of talk ideas. And yeah, when, when Steve was, was venturing into some interest in, in publishing and putting out material many years back is when the ideas were first planted in my head for this first supplementary project we're going to talk about, the Trauma and the 12 Steps daily meditations and reflections. So this is a day by day reader. A lot of you who are in recovery have used the 24 hours a day book. Um, Touchstones is another one, uh, daily reflections you may have familiarity with. Uh, personally, the 24 hours a day book was vital in my recovery to a lot of you now who've read my work know the toilet story, how my sponsor told me to put the meditation book on the toilet. And every morning when I would go to use the toilet, I would pick up the book and maybe pray and <laughs> read something spiritual. So yeah, we've been talking for a while about putting together this meditation book that is the same idea where it's a bite-sized introduction to recovery concepts, but this has a unique trauma focus to it. So Steve, uh, you know, we, we went about halfway each writing and then doing some together of, of these 366 meditations. Um, so how would you characterize this proof, but this, this volume that I'm holding in my hand? So I, I've been kind of, you know, I've been going back through it and, and what I'm really enjoying is that there's definitely, you know, there's ones that it's very obvious, it's Jamie mm -hmm. or Steve, but a majority of them it's kind of like where like this, uh, this voice, um, this third voice, third uh, voice. That, that the two of us have created. Um, but the way I would characterize it is that I, you know, I, I wrote a book that shall, it's very Kafka in that it's shoved in a drawer, right? And it was like a love letter to AA and sort of my, mm -hmm. you know, sort of my trauma informed or trauma sensitive. And sometimes I wasn't uh, given that trauma sensitivity experience in AA. And so I feel like this book is this beautiful um, sort of uh, offering of that which makes me love the program so much and love the fact that so many people have come to me and I think this is your experience too, Jamie, where I've been that, that sort of um, uh, calm in the storm for people who are being yes. shamed or who are, are, are uh, being treated in some way like their higher powers, the wrong higher power, or this, that, or the other. And so I feel like we really, I feel like we did a good job in providing a really solid trauma-informed daily meditation experience. And I like that we, you know, we offered some thoughts and then we offer practices so that it's, um, it's and it's, but it's something that can be done in a very short order. Like yes. the way that I used to work with my 24 hour book and the other books that I used, I used touchstones for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in five to 15 minutes, I could, I could do my daily do and right. feel like I had landed. So. Yes. And, and how the book is set up, as Steve was mentioning, is every day starts with a quote. 
Uh, sometimes it's a recovery saying, like I just opened to today, September 30th, and it's the recovery saying, you drive yourself crazy when you try to reason with a crazy person. Something I picked up in, in the rooms for certain. And like tomorrow, I, I quote a Latin teaching from my <laughs> upbringing. And then we have George Carlin quoted and a lot of our personal teachers and influences quoted. So every day starts with a quote. And then we go into you know just a simple reading, uh, like is common in many of the meditation books. And then we actually invite you into a practice. If you want to try a sitting practice, an expressive practice, a moving practice where you can kind of further crystallize and, and, I, and I think so much of the importance of recovery, especially trauma-informed recovery, is that need to build daily practice, that our brains heal with consistency. You and I both teach that, what is it we say, five minutes every day is better than a half an hour or an hour on a Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the reasons I was really passionate about putting this volume together was to give people more specific guidance and daily practice. Because yeah, Trauma in the 12 Steps, I, I think, I would hope is a good conceptual volume, but this really takes it another step forward into the how. And then we also conclude every day with a prayer or intention. So if you like the language of prayer, you can turn it into a prayer. If your path is more about intention setting, then you can turn this, this little phrase we've given you into an intention. So anything else you want to say about the meditation reader? I'm just thinking about how when I was introduced to um, Patrick Karn's uh, Gentle Path Through the 12 Steps, mm -hmm. right? I, a meditation book on the 12 Steps, kind mm -hmm. of outside of the realm of uh, the Hazelden readers and things right. like that. <clears throat> and uh, I think it's in the intro or the preface. He said uh, a lot of his friends joked, uh, yeah, it's kind of more like the, the, the brutal path through <laughs> the 12 Steps, because it really does kind of like land you right in the middle of it. Um, from, from the start. Um, so I feel like this book really takes 366 days on a leap year mm -hmm. to really just help you land, stay landed, mm -hmm. take off, you know, do whatever you need to do to keep your recovery going and keep yourself uh, safe enough as you do it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of 366, we, Steve did specifically wrote a February 29th meditation that is a lovely invitation into doing an every four year inventory to kind of look at. Yeah, I know it's interesting to look at where we were this time last year, but Steve, my goodness, could you have imagined 2020 would be what it would be in, um, in 2016? Oh, yeah, like, uh, no, <laughs> no. I mean, so I, I could so, imagine it would be bad, but I didn't. Know yeah. That. So I think, I think the four year inventory is, is a neat idea. Uh, and then we have the other volume, which is the Trauma and the 12 Steps Trauma Responsive Workbook, which I said I've already added my editorial color to. What I usually do is when I get a proof of a book, I end up after I've gone through that as a proof, we'll make art in it or make art on it. So that's why we have this awesome message, <laughs> very us, on the cover of the Trauma and the 12 Steps of Trauma Responsive Workbook. So this is a project that, again, several different people kind of put the idea in my head, but I really owe the credit to Anna David, who's a common friend of ours and awesome recovery writer and advocate, who, when she interviewed me for, for her podcast a couple of years ago, said, we need a workbook that's kind of specific to trauma and recovery. And so I, I kind of started chatting with Steve at that point, if we're going to do a meditation reader, recovery workbooks are a thing as well. Uh, so Steve, why don't you tell our, our listeners or those watching later on the recording a little bit about our workbook? So this workbook is a companion to Jamie's book, Tw Trauma and the 12 Steps, and also to the meditation reader and or can be used on its own. All three of these volumes are, are things that can uh, stand on their own in terms of what it is you're feeling like your needs are right now. Mm -hmm. And the thing I, one of the features that both Jamie, I know Jamie loves this too, is our step zero. Yeah, um, which is for me is one of the more trauma informed, trauma sensitive things that we've done, yep. which is to admit and accept that it would be probably really wise to uh, in the working of the steps to find at least a little bit of ground or grounding, as it were, um, before launching into this, you know, matter known as the steps. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, again, you know, in keeping with the story I was talking about or had heard about Patrick Karn's book. 
you know, that um, it really is gentle, gentle, but uh, guided and gentle, but guided in a way that leverages all of the hard work that I know both of us have done on our own recovery. Mm -hmm. And then the kind of hard work that we've both done in the professional sphere, mm -hmm. including, you know, like, uh, you know, on my side, you know, uh, working in treatment centers for years and seeing what works and what doesn't and, and finding ways to have the 12 steps uh, be supported, have the, 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 and the doer of the 12 steps be supported in that transition from, you know, in a treatment center with the bubble as it were, and then being able to take it outside and into their lives. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, that needs trauma recovery support mm -hmm. or else it's not going to be you know full body enough so that's that's what i love about it and that's what i think it's it's helpful with it can give a person a a, a new and a possibly deeper mm -hmm. experience of the steps yeah i love step zero it's it's really all about finding your ground and letting people know that they can return to that ground at any time if they need or hopefully they're working the steps from that place of groundedness because I was asked a very interesting question a few weeks, probably a few months back now, a gentleman was taking an EMDR training with me and he had taken training in another EMDR program and he would also done some advanced topics. And, and he says, you know, I noticed that this trainer focuses on this and this trainer really focuses on this. You know, he said, what would you say is like, like your number one thing that you give people in addition to EMDR? And I said, grounding. I mean, to me, grounding is a big part of EMDR done well anyway. But I mean, we know people can have their certain things they focus on like attachment or like specialty protocols. And, and I think for us as mindfulness people, it's always been about what can we give people to either stay in the present moment or return to the present moment if working the steps become overwhelming. And as I share in the main trauma in the 12 steps volume, the fourth and fifth step especially can be that gauntlet that people have a hard time passing through. And I, I think we are notorious in the program for making a bigger deal of it than it really is. But the other side of that coin is we send people into doing fourth and fifth step work, which can be riddled with trauma triggers without having grounding resources in place. So how the workbook is really structured is yes, we have the step zero with, with all of the focus on grounding. And then each step breaks down with Steve and I telling a story about our relationship with that step. Some of them are deep, some are humorous, some are just stories, right? Uh, and then we present a meditation for each step or a specific skill focus for each step, because as mindfulness folks, as expressive arts folks, we want to give people uh, as many skills as we can in companionship with working these steps. So we do different grounding practices, go through the four foundations of mindfulness, and every step gets its own skill. And then we give some obviously introspective writing questions, both for people who are working the step for the first time and people who may be on a return trip through the steps. And then in the final pages of each step, I really like this, instead of lined paper, we have blank paper and we offer an expressive arts option for working each step because some people might be able to connect with a concept or an emotion uh, better with visual art than necessarily writing out the step. So anything else reflection wise on, on our workbook, Stephen, our third yeah. child. That, that I think is my other favorite besides step zero, that little baby, um, the um, two <laughs> little babies, <laughs> um, twins. Um, so, so yeah, so the step zero and then the expressive arts options. And, and, and also again, I don't wanna, uh, you know, our, our focus on mindfulness is you know, we're, we're not 100% unique in how much we focus on that within the right. EMDR, within the trauma work, but we're pretty focused on it. And, mm -hmm. and seeing how similar to the way we discovered together, in a sense, how mindfulness uh, was at the basis of, of Shapiro's work and at the basis of how it is that people are able to get through the reprocessing of EMDR, well, same with mindfulness and the 12 steps, that mindfulness can provide such a ground and such an assist in being able to, a moment at a time, a step at a time, and then coming back to step zero whenever one needs mm -hmm. to be able to do the steps. Wonderful. So 
as is customary when we talk about books on live casts, we'll do the whole, where do you get the book? So Amazon is the short answer, hopefully in the next few days. Uh, if you are a Kindle user, the Kindle version is up of both the reader and the workbook. Uh, for the workbook, unless you have your own journal you're working into, I, I would, would recommend a print version on that especially, but many of you may be Kindle fans for the reader. So you can get that on Amazon right now. Just search Trauma and the 12 Steps, Daily Meditations or Reflections, or you can search um, just Jamie Marich or Stephen Danziger and the book will come up. Uh, it was supposed to have dropped the print version on Amazon today, but we're in a delay right now. So usually it should be up when there is a delay in the next two or three days. So uh, Amazon is probably the easiest and most cost-effective place to buy it. Although we are running a special on instituteforcreativemindfulness.com, instituteforcreativemindfulness.com, underneath publishing, since Creative Mindfulness Media, which is our publishing wing, did put out these books directly. And a, a huge thanks to North Atlantic Books for giving me the green light to do that because they uh, you know, own the rights to, or the publishing anyway, to the main trauma and the 12 steps book. But readers and workbooks really aren't in their wheelhouse. So they're like, sure, you know, put them out as, as resources for your folks. Uh, so under our publishing tab, we're running a special offer where you can get the workbook and the reader signed by me, unless you track Steve down in California at some point after COVID, then you could get his signature. But I will gladly sign both volumes and we are throwing in a first edition of Trauma and the 12 Steps because we had, we got stuck with a bunch of them because COVID got in the way of me doing live events these last couple months before the new edition was out. So I know in 12 step world, we often look at first editions like the first edition of the big book as a collector's item. So uh, if you want a collector's item, you can order our, our book through directly through ICM. So Institute for Creative Mindfulness.com. Steve, it's a pleasure. Always great talking with you. And Same tell, here, tell folks how people can find you on the interwebs. On the interwebs, you can find me at drdanziger.com, D-R-D-A-N-S-I-G-E-R. -E and then you can find me on Twitter and Instagram the same way, D-R-D-A-N-S-I-G-E-R. -E and on the Facebook under my name, um, Dr. Steven Danziger. So until our fourth child is born. Yeah, we're working on that. She's on, they, they are on the way. They are on the way. <laughs> Rest easy, everyone. Have a good